Another example of a, one of our core products, which we are redesigning with AI, is Gmail. We are bringing another feature to Gmail. We call it Smart Compose. So as the name suggests, we use machine learning to start suggesting phrases for you as you type. All you need to do is to hit tab and keep auto-completing. We are rolling out Smart Compose to all our users this month and hope you enjoy using it as well. So we are bringing a new feature called Suggested Actions, essentially suggesting smart actions right in context for you to act on. Say, for example, you went to a wedding and you're looking through those pictures. We understand your friend Lisa is in the picture, and we offer to share the three photos with Lisa, and with one click, those photos can be sent to her. Say, for example, if the photo in the same wedding, if the photo is underexposed, our AI systems offer a suggestion to fix the brightness right there, one tap, and we, we can fix the brightness for you. Or if you took a picture of a document which you want to save for later, we can recognize, convert the document to PDF, much easier for you to use later. So for example, if you have this picture, cute picture of your kid, we can make it better. We can drop the background color, pop the color, and make the kid even cuter. <laughs> or if you happen to have a very special memory, something in black and white, maybe of your mother and grandmother, we can recreate that moment in color and, and make that moment even more real <laughs> and special. All these features are going to be rolling out to Google Photos users in the next couple of months. So we've worked hard with WaveNet, and we are adding, as of today, six new voices to the Google Assistant. For example, let's be honest, it gets a little annoying to say, hey, Google, every time I want to get my assistant's attention. Now you won't have to say, hey, Google, every time. Check this out. Hey, Google, did the Warriors win? Yes, the Warriors won 118 to 92 last Sunday against the Pelicans. Nice. When's their next game? The Warriors' next game is today at 7.30 p.m., where they will be playing the Pelicans. We call this continued conversation, and it's been a top feature request. You'll be able to turn it on in the coming weeks. It's not a simple area, but one step that we've been working on is something we call Pretty Please. Some of the parents on the team have been testing it out with their families. Take a look. Hey, Google, talk to Voicetron. Daddy, you forgot to say please. <sighs> OK, Google, please tell me a story. Thanks for saying please. Play please dance, please. What a nice way to ask me. So the assistant understands and responds to positive conversation with polite reinforcement. Today, I'll show you some of the ways that this new device can make your day easier by bringing the simplicity of voice with the glanceability of a touchscreen. Hey, Google, let's watch Jimmy Kimmel Live. OK, playing Jimmy Kimmel Live on YouTube TV. Oh. Hey, Google, show me recipes for pizza bombs. Sure, here are some recipes. So we can choose the first one from Tasty. That one looks good. You see all the recipe details come right up, and we can just tap to start cooking. Sure, here's Tasty. So seeing a video demonstration along with the spoken instructions is a total game changer for cooking, especially when you have your hands full. From staying in touch with family with broadcast and duo video calling, to keeping an eye on your home with all of our other smart home partners, to seeing in advance what the morning commute's like with Google Maps, we're thoughtfully integrating the best of Google and working with developers and partners all around the world to bring voice and visuals together in a completely new way for the home. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek into how the assistant on the phone is becoming more immersive, interactive, and proactive. Hey, Google, tell me about Camila Cabello. According to Wikipedia, Carla Camila Cabello Estrabao is an American singer and songwriter. So as you can see, we're taking full advantage of the screen to give you a rich and immersive response. Here's another. Turn down the heat. Sure, cooling the living room down. And for a smart home request, what you can see here is we're bringing the controls right into your fingertips. And here's one of my favorites. 
Hey, Google, order my usual from Starbucks. Hello, welcome back to Starbucks. That's one tall, non-fat latte with caramel drizzle. Anything else? So no thanks. And are you picking that up at the usual place? So I'm going to tap yes. OK, your order's in. See you soon. So when I'm in the assistant now and swipe up, I now get a visual snapshot of my day. I see helpful suggestions based on the time, my location, and even my recent interactions with the assistant. Now, this new visual experience for the phone is thoughtfully designed with AI at the core. It will launch on Android this summer and iOS later this year. So like when you're in the car, let's say you should stay focused on driving. So let's say I'm heading home from work. I have Google Maps showing me the fastest route during rush hour traffic. Hey, Google, send Nick my ETA and play some hip hop. OK, letting Nick know you're 20 minutes away and check out this hip hop music station on YouTube. So it's so convenient to share my ETA with my husband with just a simple voice command. I'm excited to share that the assistant will come to navigation in Google Maps this summer. Even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hello, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. OK, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. OK, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. OK, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. OK, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. See how may I you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like after like five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For, when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Yep. This is going to be rolling out as an experiment in the coming weeks, and so stay tuned. YouTube is going to take the lead, and if you choose to do so, it will actually remind you to take a break. So for example, if you've been a while, may maybe it'll show up and say, hey, it's time to take a break. YouTube is also going to work to combine, if users want to, combine all their notifications in the form of a daily digest so that if you have four notifications, it comes to you once during the day. YouTube is going to roll out all these features this week. 
So let's start with how to make it easier for you to keep up with the news you care about. As soon as I open Google News, right at the top, I get a briefing with the top five stories I need to know right now. As I move past my briefing, there are more stories selected just for me. Our AI constantly reads the firehose of the web for you, the millions of articles, videos, podcasts, and comments being published every minute and assembles the key things you need to know. What's cool is I didn't have to tell the app that I follow politics, love to bike, or want information about the Bay Area. It works right out of the box. We're also excited to introduce a new visual format we call newscasts. You are not going to see these in any other news app. Full coverage is an invitation to learn more. It gives a complete picture of a story in terms of how it's being reported from a variety of sources and in a variety of formats. We start out with the set of top headlines that tell me what happened, and then start to organize around the key story aspects using our real-time event understanding. For news events that have played out like this one over weeks and months, you can, you can understand the origin of developments by looking at our timeline of the key moments. And while the recovery has begun, we can clearly see there's still a long way to go. There are also certain questions we're all asking about a story, and we pull those out so you don't have to hunt for the answers. And here in the newsstand section, it's easy to find and follow the sources I already love and browse and discover new ones, including over 1,000 magazine titles like Wired, National Geographic, and People, which all look great on my phone. I can follow publications like USA Today by directly tapping the star icon. And if there's a publication I want to subscribe to, say the Washington Post, we make it dead simple. No more forms, credit card numbers, or new passwords. Because you're signed in with your Google account, you're set. When you subscribe to a publisher, we think you should have easy access to your content everywhere. And this is why we developed Subscribe with Google. Subscribe with Google enables you to use your Google account to access your paid content everywhere, across all platforms and devices on Google Search, Google News, and publishers' own sites. We built this in collaboration with over 60 publishers around the world, and it will be rolling out in the coming weeks. Thank you. And this is one of the many steps we're taking to make it easier to access dependable, high-quality information when and where it matters most. With Android P, we partnered with DeepMind to work on a new feature we call Adaptive Battery. It's designed to give you a more consistent battery experience. Adaptive Battery uses on-device machine learning to figure out which apps you'll use in the next few hours and which you won't use until later, if at all, today. And then with this understanding, the operating system adapts to your usage patterns so that it spends battery only on the apps and services that you care about. And the results are really promising. We're seeing a 30% reduction in CPU wake-ups for apps in general. And this combined with other performance improvements, including running background processes on the small CPU cores, is resulting in an increase in battery for many users. With Android P, we've, we're introducing a new on-device machine learning feature we call Adaptive Brightness. Adaptive Brightness learns how you like to set the brightness slider, given the ambient lighting, and then does it for you in a power-efficient way. So you'll literally see the brightness slider move as the phone adapts to your preferences. And it's extremely effective. In fact, we're seeing almost half of our test users now make fewer manual brightness adjustments compared to any previous version of Android. With Android P, we're going beyond simply predicting the next app to launch to predicting the next action you want to take. We call this feature App Actions. So let's take a look at how it works. At the top of the launcher, you can see two actions, one to call my sister Fiona, and another to start a workout on Strava for my evening run. So what's happening here is that the actions are being predicted based on my usage patterns. The phone is adapting to me and trying to help me get to my next task more quickly. As another example, if I connect my headphones, Android will surface an action to resume the album I was listening to. Even more powerful is bringing part of the app UI to the user right there and then. We call this feature Slices. 
Slices are a new API for developers to define interactive snippets of their app UI that can be surfaced in different places in the OS. In Android P, we're laying the groundwork by showing Slices first in search. So let's take a look. Let's say I'm out and about, and I need to get a ride to work. If I type Lyft into the Google Search app, I now see a Slice from the Lyft app installed on my phone. Lyft is using the Slice API's rich array of UI templates to render a slice of their app in the context of search. And then Lyft is able to give me the price for my trip to work, and the Slice is interactive, so I can order the ride directly from it. Pretty nice. Now, as part of Android P, we're introducing a new system navigation that we've been working on for more than a year now. And the new design makes Android's multitasking more approachable and easier to understand. And the first striking thing you'll notice is the single clean home button. And the design recognizes a trend towards smaller screen bezels and places an emphasis on gestures over multiple buttons at the edge of the screen. So when I swipe up, I'm immediately brought to the overview where I can resume apps I've recently used. I also get five predicted apps at the bottom of the screen to save me time. Now, if I continue to swipe up or I swipe up a second time, I get to all apps. So architecturally, what we've done is combine the all apps and overview spaces into one. And the swipe up gesture works from anywhere, no matter what app I'm in, so that I can quickly get back to all apps and overview without losing the context I'm in. And if you prefer, you can also use the quick scrub gesture by sliding the home button sideways to scroll through your recent set of apps like so. Now, one of the nice things about the larger horizontal overview is that the app content is now glanceable. So you can easily refer back to information in a previous app. Uh, even more is we've extended smart text selection to work in overview. So for example, if I tap anywhere on the phrase, the killers, all of the phrase will be selected for me. And then I get an action to listen to it on Spotify, like so. And We've extended smart text selection's neural network to recognize more entities, like uh, sports teams and music artists uh, and flight codes and more. I've been using this new navigation system for the last month, and I absolutely love it. It's a much faster, more powerful way to multitask on the go. Take volume control. And we've all been there. You try to turn down the volume before a video starts, but instead you turn down the ringer volume, and then the video blasts everyone around you. Uh, so how are we fixing it? Well, you can see the new simplified volume controls here. Uh, they're vertical and located beside the hardware buttons, so they're intuitive. But the key difference is that the slider now adjusts the media volume by default, because that's the thing you want to change most often. And for the ringer volume, all you really care about is on, silent, and off, like so. OK. We've also greatly simplified rotation. And if you're like me and hate your device rotating at the wrong time, you'll love this feature. So right now, I'm in the locked rotation mode. And uh, let me launch an app. And you'll notice that when I rotate the device, a new rotation button appears on the nav bar. And then I can just tap on it and rotate under my own control. It's pretty cool. Android P will show you a dashboard of how you're spending time on your device. As you saw earlier, you can see how, many, how much time you spent in apps, how many times you've unlocked your device today, and how many notifications you've received. And you can drill down on any of these things. For example, here's my Gmail data from Saturday. And when I saw this, it did make me wonder whether I should have been on my email all weekend. But that's kind of the point of the dashboard. Now, when you're engaging is one part of understanding. But what you're engaging with in apps is equally important. It's like watching TV. Catching up on your favorite shows at the end of a long day can feel pretty good. But watching an infomercial might leave you wondering why you didn't do something else instead. Many developers call this concept meaningful engagement. And we've been working closely with many of our developer partners who share the goal of helping people use technology in healthy ways. So in Android P, developers can link to more detailed breakdowns of how you're spending time in their app from this new dashboard. For example, YouTube will be adding a deep link where you can see total watch time across mobile and desktop and access many of the helpful tools that Sundar shared earlier. Maybe you have an app that you love, but you're spending more time in it than you realized. Android P lets you set time limits on apps and will nudge you when you're close to your limit that it's time to do something else. And for the rest of the day, that app icon is grayed out 
to remind you of your goal. To make Do Not Disturb even easier to use, we've created a new gesture that we've affectionately codenamed Shush. If you turn your phone over on the table, it automatically enters Do Not Disturb, so you can focus on being present. In an emergency, we all want to make sure we're still reachable by the key people in our lives, like your partner or your child's school. Android P will help you set up a list of contacts that can always get through to you with a phone call. Wind down mode. You can tell the Google Assistant what time you aim to go to bed, and when that time arrives, it will switch on Do Not Disturb and fade the screen to grayscale which is far less stimulating for the brain and can help you set the phone down. It's such a simple idea, but I found it's amazing how quickly I put my phone away when all my apps go back to the days before color TV. Well, today, we're announcing Android P Beta. And with efforts in Android Oreo to make OS upgrades easier, Android P Beta is available on Google Pixel and seven more manufacturer flagship devices today. We're now able to automatically add new addresses, businesses, and buildings that we extract from street view and satellite imagery directly to the map. This is critical in rural areas, in places without formal addresses, and in fast-changing cities like Lagos here, where we've literally changed the face of the map in the last few years. We can also tell you if the business you're looking for is open, how busy it is, what the wait time is, and even how long people usually spend there. We can tell you before you leave whether parking is going to be easy or difficult. And we can help you find it. And we can now give you different routes based on your mode of transportation, whether you're riding a motorbike or driving a car. And by understanding how different types of vehicles move at different speeds, we can make more accurate traffic predictions for everyone. We've been working hard on an updated version of Google Maps that keeps you in the know on what's new and trending in the areas you care about and helps you find the best place for you based on your context and interests. Here, I'm being told about a cafe that just opened in my area. If we scroll down, I see a list of the restaurants that are trending this week. This is super useful because with zero work, Maps is giving me ideas to kick me out of my rut and inspire me to try something new. If you cook into the match number, you'll see reasons explaining why it's recommended just for you. It's your personal score for places, and our early testers are telling us that they love it. Long press on any place to add it to a short list. Now, I'm always up for ramen, but I know my friends have lots of opinions of their own, so I can add some more options to give them some choices. When you've collected enough places that you like, share the list with your friends to get their input, too. You can easily share with just a couple of taps on any platform that you prefer. Then, my friends can add more places if they want to, or just vote with one simple click so we can quickly choose a group favorite. Let me paint the familiar picture. You exit the subway, you're already running late for an appointment or a tech company conference. That happens. Uh, and then your, your phone says, head south on Market Street. So what do you do? One problem, you have no idea which way is south. So you look down at the phone, you're looking at that blue dot on the map, and you're starting to walk to see if it's moving in the same direction. If it's not, you're turning around. <laughs> We've all been there. So we asked ourselves, well, what if the camera can help us here? Our teams have been working really hard to combine the power of the camera, the computer vision, with street view and maps to reimagine walking navigation. So here's how it could look like in Google Maps. Let's take a look. You open the camera. You instantly, you instantly know where you are. No futzing with the phone. You, you, all the information on the map, the street names, the directions, right there in front of you. Notice that you also see the map, so that way you stay oriented. Uh, you can start to see nearby places, so you see what's around you. Now, enabling these kinds of experiences, though, GPS alone doesn't cut it. So that's why we've been working on what we call VPS, Visual Positioning System that can estimate precise positioning and orientation. One, one way to think about the key insight here is, just like you and I, when we are in an unfamiliar place, you're looking for visual landmarks. You're looking for the storefront, the building facades, et cetera. And it's the same idea. VPS uses the visual features in the environment to do the same. So that way, we help you figure out exactly where you are and get you exactly where you need to go. Pretty cool. 
Now today, Lens is a capability in Google products like Photos and the Assistant. But we're very excited that starting next week, Lens will be integrated right inside the camera app on the Pixel, the new LG G7, and a lot more devices. But now, with smart text selection, you can now connect the words you see with the answers and actions you need. So you can do things like copy and paste from the real world directly into your phone, just like that. <laughs> or let's say you're looking at, or, or you can pay, turn a page of words into a page of answers. So for example, you're looking at a restaurant menu. You can quickly tap around, figure out every dish, what it looks like, what are all the ingredients, etc. OK, the next feature I want to talk about is called Style Match. And the idea is this. Sometimes your question is not, oh, what's that exact thing? Instead, your question is, what are things like it? You're at your friend's place. You check out this trendy-looking lamp. And you want to know things that match that style. And now Lens can help you. So the last thing I want to tell you about today is how we're making Lens work in real time. So as you saw in the style match example, you start to see, you open the camera, and you start to see Lens surface proactively all the information instantly. And it even anchors that information to the things that you see. Now this kind of thing, where it's sifting through billions of words, phrases, places, things just in real time to give you what you need, not possible without machine learning. Thank you.